Hi everyone and welcome to this short video, Anxiety Unmasked. So anxiety, stress, you know, it's an experience that so many people have these days to a lesser or greater degree. And people are always seeking ways to manage stress, to take something for their stress. But we seem to turn stress into a pathology, like it's something that's wrong with you. But stress is actually a natural biological process. People, when they come to me wanting to wanting some help with anxiety, you know, will often say, I want you to take away my anxiety. I want to get rid of it. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> anxiety is there to keep you safe. The stress response is absolutely vital if you're in a situation of mortal threat. Um, but these days, we're not often in that situation. We're more in a state of psychological threat and often we are our own predator and prey. It's our own mind monkeys that are stressing us out. And simply eradicating that misses the point. We also need to think about stress as being the same biological mechanism that gives us joy, right? When you're really excited about something, you get shortness of breath, you get butterflies in the stomach, your mouth goes a bit dry. It's the same symptoms as when you're in a, in a sort of more negative stress state. So if we take away anxiety, we take away the ability to experience joy at a biological level. So what I think is really key to this, the way to put you in the driving seat of this is to understand how it works. And often when I start to explain to people the mechanisms that underlie the stress response, they're like, Oh, suddenly it becomes more tangible. It's something we can actually use and do something with. And again, if you're using some sort of stress management practices, yoga, breath work, uh, which we'll talk about, when you understand how and why they work, they actually become more powerful and you can actually start to use them in a more contextualized way. So this really is about giving you some background information from which you can understand the stress mechanism from within and then inform how you manage that and which tools might be best for you in any given situation. So that's a lot to pack into a short video, but this is going to give you a little taste. So I'm just going to bring up some uh, visuals here so we can see what we're uh, talking about. So we're going to be looking at the body um, and there are many, many mechanisms involved in, in the stress response, but we're going to look particularly at the nervous system and we're going to look at two branches of our nervous system. And the nervous system is just the body's communication system. It's a bit like the body's internet, if you like. And there's a couple of branches of it that mediate our stress response but also our relaxed response. And what we need to think of is this is a long spectrum. We're not either in one or the other. We are always in a dance between these two different states in the body. It's just which one is dominating at any given time. So we're gonna start off looking at the sympathetic nervous system. This is our fight or flight system and is obviously where the stress and anxiety response lives. And the, this is a primitive system that was designed to keep us safe in the event of mortal threat, right? A bear attack, a saber-toothed tiger chasing us. And we either need to have the strength to fight this thing, or we need to make uh, an assessment that allows us to run away very, very quickly. So this is why we call it the fight or flight response. So it's a primitive system not really designed for us with our own mind monkeys, because these days we're typically stressed out just reading our emails or just worrying about something we've got to do tomorrow. We're not actually in a state of mortal threat. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, is this response appropriate or proportionate? Those are key words. So what happens when we go into this mode? So if your senses detect some sort of threat, and that could be you see something, you hear something, you even smell something, then the brain has a sort of smoke detector in it that's looking for trouble. And when it assesses that we might be under some sort of threat, it's going to launch this sort of cascade of events that allow us to mount an appropriate response. 
So it could be a physical threat that we're actually under some kind of physical threat. But these days, as I say, it tends to be a little more psychological. So what the brain is going to do is it's going to light up this sympathetic nervous system. And this system is going to give us the means to either get out of dodge really quickly or mount a defense. So really, this is just a system of threat detection that leads to mobilization. We detect what's going on. We get ourselves in a, in a mode that we can respond to it. So this is the system that just gets you out of bed in the morning at a lesser degree, right? So again, if we simply get rid of our ability to respond in this way, we'd never get out of bed and do anything. So if you're gonna do exercise, you've got to have a bit of this mobilization uh, online, but what we don't want is it to run away with us and become too extreme. So on the other end of the scale, we have the parasympathetic nervous system. So this is the, the opposite end of the spectrum. And this is the rest and digest system. So it's the system that we sleep in, right? It's the state that we need to be in to sleep. It's our rest, chill out state. Um, but it's also the state that we need to be in to digest our food. And this is quite important. And we'll talk a bit about that uh, in a moment. But essentially, when we're in this parasympathetic dominant state, the body can go about all its housekeeping, right? Tissue growth and repair happens in this state. Our body temperature gets regulated in this state. So homeostasis, this kind of fancy name, just really refers to the body's thermostat. The body's always calibrating itself. Am I too hot? Am I too cold? Am I too acid? Am I too alkaline? And it's always bringing us into balance. But these things only happen when we're in that parasympathetic state. So it's very, very important for our health because this whole thing is health, right? Balance. So if we are hanging out too much up that sympathetic end, we're not getting any of this housekeeping going on. And this is what can lead to illness and dis-ease, right? So let's look at what happens in the body when we're in that sympathetic fight or flight state, because there's lots of biological things going on here. Your heart rate's going to go up, which means your blood pressure's going up. This is to get blood around the body quickly so that we're ready to defend ourselves. Our muscles are actually going to tense up so that we're ready to either take a blow or give a blow. <laughs> The immune system is suppressed. There are many things that go on in the body that drain what I call our battery life, right? We only have so much energy availability and it needs to be distributed around various systems. When we go into this state, we are all about imminent threat, right? We've got to deal with what's going on. So we need to divert all our resources to this imminent threat. So the body doesn't really care if you catch a cold or whether you're fighting a cold if you're about to get eaten by a tiger, right? It's about priorities. So it's gonna divert energy away from the immune system, which is why if we're stressed all the time, we tend to get ill. Your senses are heightened because we need to read the situation. We need to see, hear, smell much more keenly. Pain is another sense. So this also explains why a lot of people start to say, well, I thought I, that back pain had gone away, but why is it back? If you're in a stress state, it's like the volume dials up on everything, and that includes pain. Inflammation is increased. This is pretty important as well, because inflammation has its uses. It's there as a defense response. Now, one of the things the body anticipates if you're about to get mauled by a lion is that you might get an open wound. And if you've got an open wound, inflammation is what goes to heal the wound and to protect and kill off any bacteria that might invade that wound. So when we're in a stressed state, the body produces inflammation as a sort of preemptive strike, just in case we might get um, attacked and get a skin wound. So we've got uh, inflammation running around the body and most of the time we're not getting physically attacked. So it's not got anything to do and it's gonna cause trouble. The digestive system also gets switched off. So your uh, digestive system, again, is very expensive in terms of energy use. So the, the body doesn't care if you're digesting your lunch, if you're about to become lunch for a predator. So that gets switched off. Your saliva or the mucus and movement of the gut system gets shut down. That's why we get a dry mouth when we're stressed. 
our breath goes into a shallow, high, rapid kind of pattern, which leads again to increased tension in the upper body. And we get sugar dumped into our bloodstream because, again, that gives us instant energy to fight the uh, attacking, mauling predator. But again, we're us usually not do any doing anything physical in response to this threat. We're just sitting in our own you know, in front of our own computer with our own mind monkey, we're not actually running this stuff off. Sugar left unchecked in the bloodstream causes problems. It's corrosive to blood vessels, to, um, to organs. It's also going to cause your pancreas to have to try and pump out insulin to bring sugar levels down because sugar is so toxic to the body. So if it's not being used, it's causing trouble. And this is why issues like diabetes uh, can come online, known as a disease of stress, right? So now you start to see that how the biology is being driven towards a particular situation, but most of the time we're not dealing with it in that way. And therefore these things start to cause problems. So let's look at the flip side of it. What happens when we're in that parasympathetic state? Well, it's pretty much the reverse, right? Your heart rate and blood pressure can come down. Your muscles can relax. You can go back to a regular breathing pattern. That digestive system is going to come online. The saliva and mucus secretion, your gastric juices come back online. The gut starts its movement processes again and growth and repair can take place, right? So this is where the body restores, regenerates. And remember that if your digestive system is switched off, which it is in the sympathetic state, whatever's in your system starts to get inflamed and cause digestive discomfort. Inflammation in the body is a signal that we're not safe. That can feed back to the brain and say, the gut's not safe. And then guess what? We're gonna run the anxiety program again. So we get ourselves into this loop. So it's really, really vital that we understand the importance of making this parasympathetic state our dominant state and only using the stress state for when it's appropriate and proportionate to do so. So we really need to do a system reset. We need to know how to do control alt delete on that runaway train as it gets going. And the key to this is really getting ahead of it. Once it gets a hold of you, it kind of runs away with you. So spotting early warning signs that, that you're going into, oh, I can feel my breath's gone a bit high. I can feel my abdomen's gone tight. I can feel my shoulders have gone up. If you can recheck at that point, you can override the system and stop yourself going. Because once you get too far down the track, it's gonna run away with you. So here are some of the things that you can do. There are many, many ways that we uh, can manage our anxiety, uh, but these are things that are gonna help bring you into that parasympathetic state. So breath work, I'm sure you're all familiar with, uh, with certain types of breath work and there are many different ways to do this. And it can sometimes get labeled as a little bit kind of, oh, it's a bit woo woo, ooh, just breathe, you know, it's, it's relaxing. But it actually has tangible physical benefits. It actually changes the physiology when you take deep in breaths, allowing your abdomen to expand and bringing lots of oxygen into the system. When you have more oxygen in your system, your heart rate can come down. So it's a way of stopping that runaway heart rate that's part of the sympathetic response. We can override it. When we breathe out, we are bringing the vagus nerve online, which is the main nerve that mediates this parasympathetic system. So as we take our inhale, we want our exhale to be twice as long as the inhale so that we pull ourselves into the parasympathetic state. So it has biological benefits. It's not just a, a superficial way of calming down. Yoga is very, very useful as well. It incorporates a lot of breath work, but again, it brings you into relationship with your body. It makes you get in touch with various states of your body. If you don't know what relaxed feels like, you can't recreate it. You can't tell the difference as between that and when you're in a stressed state. So yoga helps you get into relationship with the body in a more relaxed state. 
so that you can then bring that into your daily life. Okay, can I sit at my computer in the same state that I am in my yoga class? It needs to be a transferable skill. The nervous system is highly contextualized. And if you simply do your yoga on a mat in one corner of your room, your brain goes, oh, well that mat's where I chill out and I'm relaxed in front of my computer is where I'm like this, right? So. We need to take the skills that we learn from breath work, that we learn from yoga and put them into context in our daily lives in order for them to have effect. Because it's not just about having some downtime, it's about being able to bring your downtime into your work time, right? We don't need to be in a fully stressed state and we're not as effective when we're in a fully stressed state either. Mindfulness practice is another uh, important one. This is again, again about being in the moment, living in the present. Anxiety is not about the present. Anxiety is either worrying about something that might happen, right? It's not happening right now, but you've got that interview tomorrow and you're stressing about it. Or it's reliving something that happened before, right? Oh, yesterday I had that row with that with my boss or whatever. And you keep replaying it in your mind and you're putting yourself back in that stress state. But right now in your room, you're completely safe. Nothing's attacking you. Nothing's threatening you. So why are you in that state? So when you bring yourself into the present and go, well, actually in here, I am completely safe. The, the body can come down into that safe mode. At the end of the day, all we're talking about here is, are we in the safe mode or the unsafe mode? Are we running the I am safe program or the I am unsafe program? And if you're running the I am unsafe program, when actually you are completely safe in your room, it's kind of, again, inappropriate, disproportionate. So this was just a little glimpse into the, the very, very complex mechanisms that underlie the stress response. But hopefully it's starting to help you look at it a different way. When you understand how something works, you can change it. You can override it and make sure that when you are using stress management techniques, they don't exist in a bubble that has nothing to do with the rest of your life learn, tap into what you feel like when you're in that state, learn to bring that over. We call them practices for a reason, but at some point we have to put them into action. So if this has whetted your appetite to learn more about this, I do have a full course available uh, that goes into much more detail of how stress affects digestion, the immune system, and and we'll also give you some more practical techniques about how to develop some strategies for managing your stress in your daily life. But in the meantime, go and have a little relax somewhere, take some time to breathe and get yourself into that parasympathetic state. I'll see you again soon.